Um, and it's a condensed version of a much longer piece, so hopefully it works short. Okay, it's called The Borrower. As far as I'm concerned, Tiffany's Corners, population 22, can't even call itself a proper village. It's just a place out in the middle of nowhere where two roads, one paved and one graveled, intersect at perfect 90 degree angles, as if someone used a giant protractor to make sure. On one of the corners is a church and a cemetery, on the second a school, and on the third a garage, all of them abandoned. On the fourth corner there is a general store that doubles as a post office. It's owned by a couple named Marvin and Joy. Every Saturday, I walk the two kilometers of gravel road from our rented farmhouse to the store. Marvin always asks how Dad is, and I smile and lie and say, he's good. I ask Joy for a cloth, and I dust a section of shelving, removing each item and cleaning it before placing everything back in neat rows. Joy always says, you're such a good girl, Jean. I especially like to dust the earring display. I don't have pierced ears, and my mother says that I can't get them done until I'm 16, but I like to look at all the different shapes. When I'm finished, when I'm finished dusting, I buy a bottle of Coke and a big bag of Doritos with some of my babysitting money. I carry them across the road to the cemetery, where I sit in the shadow of the church and eat and drink. If I take them home, I'll be expected to share. The farmhouse has a proper attic, not just a crawl space like our old house. I like to sit in the silvery light of the only window and write in my diary. It has gilt edged pages and a lock and a tiny key that I keep on a string around my neck. <laughs> sometimes I write about my day and sometimes I try to write poetry, but mostly I write about how things never stay the same and whether I really want them to. I write about the difference between borrowing and stealing and where to draw the line between. When I was a little girl, I liked to read about the borrowers, tiny people who lived in the walls and under the floors and borrowed things from the big people in order to survive. I used to pretend I was a borrower and borrowed teaspoons full of sugar and flour, a tea bag torn open, a thimble for a cup, sewing needles and pins and wooden spools, a box of matches, buttons and bottle caps, birthday candles, and empty pill bottles. My mother would say, I'm sure I left it right here, as she removed the cushions from the sofa and searched in all the cracks. Maybe the borrowers took it, I would say. Well, if you see them, tell them to bring it back. I was always on the lookout for things that might come in handy. I hid them in a shoebox under my bed. Now I don't have a bed, just a mattress on the floor, so I keep my collections in the attic where nobody but me goes. I have a collection of poems written by my great-grandmother. I took them from the spot next to the family tree between the covers of my mother's Bible. Someone has typed the poems onto paper that was probably once white, but is now amber with brown spots like measles, small and singular in some places and big and blotchy in others. I've been babysitting since I was 11. One of the families I babysit for lives on a pig farm and all you can smell is pig shit. Mum says shit when something goes wrong, but she doesn't like me to say shit, so I say poo or number two or sometimes excrement to sound intelligent but I like to say shit silently in my head. Nearly every time I babysit, I borrow something that won't be missed, like a toy soldier or a tampon. The other day, I walked to the corners. I told Marvin that my father was good. I did some dusting. I bought some Doritos and Coke and took them to the cemetery. Back home, I crept up to the attic. I lifted a loose floorboard and took out a cookie tin. Inside the tin was my collection of silver earrings, still attached to their price sticker display cards. There were 13 pairs, each of them borrowed, one at a time, from the corner store. From my pocket, I took out another pair of earrings, shaped like sunflowers. 
That's all I remember. The next thing I knew, I was lying at the bottom of the attic stairs. When I tried to move, I felt a pain in my back like a steel trap snapping shut. This morning, I wanted to write something in my diary, so I sent my mother to the attic to get it for me. She was gone a long time, and when she came back, she had fistfuls of earrings. What are these, she said. Earrings, I said. I have eyes, she said. What are they doing in the attic? I didn't steal them. I would hope not. They're Wendy's, I said. Wendy lives a bit further down the road. I'm not supposed to play with her. My father says she is a bad influence. I'll have to call her mother. No, don't, I said. I don't want her to get into trouble. She's had a tough life. I borrowed the last sentence from my mother.